Hey, blessings to you. Welcome to Director's Chair. I'm your host, Jerry B. Now, on this show, we highlight and feature independent filmmakers from our local region and from all over the world. We're talking with the key people behind the scenes to bring them to the forefront to share their vision and their art. And I'm telling you, kicking off our very first episode today is James Ford of J Films and Melanie Clark Pinella of Youngstown Pictures. I'm excited to have you both on. How are you guys doing? Great. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm so excited, Jerry. Good to see you. Good to see you too. And James, man, how you doing, bro? I'm doing great, Jerry. It's a pleasure to be on the show today. Now, what's interesting about this particular first episode is the fact that although we'll be interviewing you separately, you've actually worked together in the past. How long has that been? James? <laughs> uh, I want to say that was uh, 2021. It was the housekeeper um, when we first met. So, yeah, it's, it's been a little journey. Mm-hmm. When, when you're making films in a small town, you, you do end up running together. Um, but it's always it's always a pleasure working with James. He's a fantastic guy. I tell you what, and this is going to be a lot of fun. So relax. You're going to enjoy the show. We're going to actually start with James because I, I, I feel the need to grill him uh, first and foremost because I've known you all of my life. You know, two thirds of my life for sure. And all I've ever known before last year, James, was Jamie Ford, music producer. And then all of a sudden, here are these wonderful films coming out. What was the transition? Well, I mean, the transition, I, I believe, was when I had my record label back in 02 and I needed to get a music video done. And um, in the area, it wasn't a, a, a lot of people at the time that was doing the music videos like that. And so I um, reached out and uh, talked to a company in Canada and um, they told me everything that they had. And I said, you know what, I'm going to kind of start that and, uh, and see what happens. And so I made the first music video for my uh, uh, gospel artist that I had at the time. And so um, and with the recording studio, I decided to offer that service to other people. Um, that were frequenting my studio, and so, um, and that's how I kind of, kind of began. That's excellent. That's excellent. So this was when? We're, we're, when are we talking? Ninety nine, two thousand. When did it flip for you? So it, it flipped in. I would say that was around two thousand and two. So that, that's when it flipped. Yeah, and it, it always had been in my blood you know, messing with video and stuff like that. I shot some like music videos for myself back in the, the early nineties, <laughs> uh, late eighties, early nineties. And so it always been in my blood at that point. So, so now take me into the fact that you are, are also writing a lot of your work as well. You're not just directing. Is, is, is that something that came naturally because of being a songwriter or, or where was the creative energy for that? I would say I write a good percentage of some of the stuff that I do, uh, but I also hire other writers um, nice. and, and hiring other writers. Yeah. You know, hiring other writers, you know, like Melanie, uh, Melanie wrote uh, the movie that, that we're going to talk about a little bit later here, what happens in the dark. Um, and so, um, and I have a couple other writers that, you know, you know, we come up with the ideas, you know, me and my, my business partner, Eric Nolan, and, um, and then we'll get those writers to, to work on everything. That's excellent. Well, you got to tell me because, see, Eric comes from a music background as well. So you have two musicians, you know. Uh, how, how did you meet yeah. Eric and, and uh, uh, how did you form J Films? So how I met Eric was back in 2011, I believe. Um, uh, a musical artist around here and also a high school friend, uh, Roseville Griffin, Black Rose. Um, yeah. He was, he, he was uh, joining the group uh, Levert. And um, Mark Gordon from the group had brought Eric in, um, you know, through a recording session one day. And then me and Eric, you know, talked and, and kind of found out, you know, we both had a good interest, you know, the biggest, the love of interest in music. And so uh, when I was downsizing my music studios, 
he um, purchased one of my studios and we became friends then. And, um, and in, in 2022, um, we decided to say, you know, we wanted to launch um, J Films. So we, we did that in 2022. And ever since we've been run, you know, running the grind on it after that. So uh, it's been a passion of both of ours. Yeah, it seems like a passion for you. I mean, you know, of course, I have seen the movie that we're about to show the trailer on, uh, What Happens in the Dark, and it seems like everyone, every character, and of course we'll, we'll, we'll talk about them in a second, but every character gave 110% is a very compelling movie. So the question that I have for you then is, you know, because Eric is acting in that movie, was that something that came naturally for him, obviously you can't answer for him, but being on the other side of the camera, was that something that he really had to work at or he just jumped at it? Well, he also was in The Fighting Temptations with Beyonce and Cuba Gooden Jr. I didn't and know so he, 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 yeah, that was back in, I think, 04 or so when they did that movie. And he'd been in a couple other little small movies, you know. Um, and so from there, uh, when I did the actual short to What Happens in the Dark, he um, he reprised his role as the uncle in the movie, and, and when we turned it into a feature, it was more of a media role uh, where it was some lines, and you know, it, it was uh, you know we'll, we'll talk about that a little later, you know, about how directing and things happen, but um, but he, yeah, he, he he got into the role pretty good. That's good. He did. He did absolutely excellent. So, you know, can we uh, look forward to seeing a James Ford on the other side of the camera in any of your upcoming projects? Well, you, you kind of if you go out and watch the movie, what happens in the dark, you're going to get a quick glimpse of me uh, in a scene in the movie. That's about it. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, tell me, what kind of stories as a filmmaker are you trying to tell? What's, you know, what what are you trying to convey in each one of your projects that you want your audience to know? Well, I want it to be entertainment. You know, I want people to enjoy the movie. I want people to think about the movie and inspire them if, if there's, you know, an uh, inspirational piece. So, you know, with the different projects that we have coming up, um, we, we're giving a little bit to everybody, you know, so we got some thrillers, we got some dramas, we got, you know, comedies, we, we got everything. So we're just trying to make sure that people are entertained and, um, and, and, and from the movies that we can inspire people, we want to inspire people to be filmmakers, actors, um, in front of the camera, behind the cameras, a lot of you know, different things out there. Wow. Very cool. Well, I would love to play this trailer now. Is that okay with you? We can just uh, play it and you, you just set it up. It, it is it is actually a trailer. It's not a clip. So, but is there something that you want to you want us to really hone in on as we watch it? Um, I mean, uh, you know, look at you know uh, the quality of the actors, the quality of the, the trailer, um, and, and it's just a, a story that. Um, you know, that entails a lot of mystery and um, and and um, and excitement. You said it. Absolutely. So here's the trailer to What Happens in the Dark. This is James Ford, J. Films. Check this out. I feel great. I feel like things are moving in the right direction. Are you still sore? <laughs> Constantly doing IVF treatments is my choice. I knew that that came with the deal and I'm fine with it. Hey, I'm proud of you. You're late again. Wait on a couple of pickups. Don't worry, I got you. Look, big man is getting irritated. He normally kill people on him 100K and you were well over that limit. I'm gonna need a little bit more time. I'm gonna give you the next Friday. 50k cash. You owe him that money. I hear you, Keish, but it ain't that simple. Everything okay? Time to pay up. You got a week to do it. Make it happen. I just wanted to let you know that I received a withdrawal request from your husband. What do you mean? Are you hitting me? Big man, gotta hit off of that man anyway for 100k. That boy ain't gonna live to see tomorrow. You all think you know him? 
que tu tentes. That was the trailer to What Happens in the Dark. Very, very compelling movie. We're talking with James Ford of J Films. And listen, fantastic work. Again, I've seen the whole thing. But as you were watching the trailer, were you reminiscing on some of the challenges that you had to walk through from conception to finalization? Yeah, I mean, it, it was very challenging. Um, you know, one of the things that happened in this movie, we we stopped, um, we filmed part of it in uh, 2021 or 2022, at the end of 2022, and we stopped because of, you know, the weather change and everything. And so when we started back up, you know, one of the challenges was that the one of the, the, the actors, you know, went to get another movie somewhere else and, uh, you know, cut his hair. So then we had to reshoot that movie all over again from start to <laughs> start to finish pretty well. Um, so it, it was it was something that you really learned um, and, and it was a great challenge for me. <laughs> so so tell me a little bit about location. Was most of it filmed in the Mahoney Valley or, you know, where were your location shots? Some of those I recognize. Yes. So we had locations in Youngstown, uh, Howland, uh, Cleveland and um, and Warren. So it was just a nice variety of places that we were able to utilize and it was just a great experience that's absolutely right now what what was the process in getting your cast did you hold auditions were there casting calls or you know because people who don't know about films like us we we want to know how does that just happen they don't just walk up what's the process well the process with this one we were kind of we, we had people in mind because we did the short film of it in 2020. And so we were bringing some of those actors back. And um, and, and once we got this movie into a, um, a, a more of a feature film where you had a lot more uh, dialogue and character interaction, you know, we decided, you know, we had to replace a little few people and, and change it up a little bit. But we didn't hold a casting call per se for this one, but for our future film, we will. Okay, so now it is airing on Tubi. Are there any other places Correct. where we can watch what happens in the dark? Right now is a Tubi only because it's a Tubi original and uh, Tubi licensed it, so so they have it and it's theirs for you know uh, the time period that they got it. So that's the best place to watch it. That's fantastic, man, James. I hope you will come back to director's chair when you do your next project and your next project and your next project. We would love to have you. Most definitely, no problem. I definitely would love to. Absolutely. Well, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere, but we have to bring Melanie back. And Melanie, I'm just meeting you maybe eight months in now and you and your husband, Luke, and just you're just a wonderful, wonderful person. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks for saying so. And thanks so much for having me. So happy to be in Ohio. Now, you're not a transplant. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're not a native Ohio. You're a transplant from... I am a native Ohio. I'm native Ohio. Are native you? Ohio. Yeah, but my husband's not. But I, I've been gone since 2001. Uh, but now I'm back. And I got my husband to move with me. I see. Well, you know, yeah. He, lucky guy. He sh he should have done just that. <laughs> so I did not know. I thought that you were from New York. I apologize. I, you, 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 what's the, they always say, like, if you live there more than 10 years, you become a New Yorker. I'm going with that. I, I, I thugged it out there. I, I lived, you know, I, I had the bad apartment. I worked really hard. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call myself that. Understood. Well, what got you into movie making? I mean, did you just have a bug where you're an actor before you became a director? Or what's your story? Um, well, you know, I was always the kid, I think, that was performing, you know, on the my dad's home movies. I'm the one singing or, you know, making up the play or directing um, some friends of mine, you know, when we were young. We have like a whole reel of films that we made from like, like you know, nine years old to like 12 years old. Um, but then it's funny. I think we all sort of have had that moment. But I spent a lot of time in the music industry as well. And I started um, 
getting well i mean i was always interested i went to school for animation but um it after a while i became able to start you know putting together music videos for other artists i started to you know get a little bit of a reputation so um you know i kept i kept asking to go and or being asked to go and i kept showing up amazing so you're one of those uh people that won't say no you just want to roll up your sleeves and just try it and make it happen i was but yes yes <laughs> excellent so tell me about the formation of youngstown pictures how did it come about um well my cousin uh pamela and i own that company together and we formed that because she was my my first co-pilot you know since since we were kids um when my parents got divorced my father lived with his sister who was pam's mom and so my weekends were spent with dad were spent in pam's house so we we were the ones making the movies together since we were little kids and so what year did you uh form the company uh, the company is more newly formed. We formed it in 2019, I believe. Yes. Mm hmm Uh-huh. And so why? Just why did you call it Youngstown Pictures? It's a trick question. <laughs> well, I was actually working more at that point in Ohio um, towards my goal of working on film sets than I was in New York because... Being in the music industry, I never made movies in, in New York to the frequency where I had to join the union, and it's mostly union shows there. Um, so people were bringing me back to Youngstown, to Akron, to work uh, producing um, on sets of commercials and a documentary, um, which was, so I was honored. You know, I was being asked to come back home, and I am a Youngstown girl at heart. I. I, I love it here. You know, I, I've always knew I would come back and I did. And uh, and I've always wanted to make movies here as well, which I have. And um, yeah, it's it's just it's it's my heart and it's where it all started and where it's going to end. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to ask you one of the questions that I've asked, James. And, you know, it's a personal question for me because I'm a musician and I know when I'm writing songs and producing songs, there's a certain story that a thread that I'm trying to weave, no matter how many songs it is. It's just something that I want to convey. What type sure. of stories are you in your heart? Do you want to tell to your audience who watch your films? That's a great question. I think, um, you know, in the respect of time, I could just simply say I want to, I always want to be able to write a character that you, I want to make you care about them. Uh, whether, whether they're evil or not, I want you to always be curious what happened to that person to make them become the, the you know, the perception that we're seeing them as in this short amount of time you know, period that a movie takes place over. Um, so I want to, I want to be able to put, and that's a big ask, right? Um, but that's, that's, that's always my goal when I'm writing characters, which is actually my favorite thing to do. Well, you uh, were kind enough to send us the clip from the movie, Find Them. And mm -hmm. would you please tell us a little bit about it? I think, if I'm not mistaken, if my eyes are not uh, fooling me, it was filmed somewhere around Mill Creek Park. Am, am I right about that? I, I, it was. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that film. Uh, well, yes, I, that, I've always wanted to film in Mill Creek Park, but in Bear's Den at the Rocks in particular. Uh, my dad and I used to go there on the weekends and I told him once that I was going to make a movie there someday. And he said, okay. Um, so I did. And uh, it's a scary movie. And I was in a really messed up headspace when I, when I wrote that. Um, and interestingly enough, like, it's like when I watch it now, I'm like, wow, you know, like that's, that's what world I was living in and not in particular, but um, more so I was with the ranger with Ranger Ross. Um, that's kind of like, I, I, I lived in him through writing that script. Wow. Wow. Understood. Well, you, you don't mind if we uh, play the clip right now, do you? Sure. I know. I think it's a short clip, but um, yeah, you'll get, 
You'll get the idea. Well, that just gives us more time to talk to each other, right? Perfect. So, <laughs> yeah. Here we go. This is Find Them. This is Melanie Clark Pinella. Youngstown Pictures. Wonderful film. Check it out. My daughter's still alive. I can feel it in my heart and my soul. The movie's called Find Them. This is the director of the movie, great filmmaker, Melanie Clark Vanella. She's born and raised in Youngstown, Ohio. I didn't even know that. I thought I was meeting someone for the first time who was way out there in New York, but she's here, hometown young lady. Here's something I must ask you, Melanie, and then we'll get back yeah. to the film, but my understanding is you are the director of entertainment for the city of Youngstown. And I know that we've been having some wonderful events. We have you to thank for them, correct? Uh, well, myself and a wonderful, um, a wonderful group of people that work for the city, yes. Excellent. Well, you know, I was pretty active downtown in the uh, summer of 23. So, you know, a lot of the events I saw were oh, top notch. Thank you thank for you. helping our city. Now, I have to ask you, as I did before with respect to James, now, as you, you're you watching this clip, are you reminding yourself of some of the challenges that you had to kind of walk through? Oh, yeah. I mean, a million percent. It's funny because I think that people have this sort of, they'll, they'll look at something that you did and, and it's an indie film or, you know, and, and, and I'm talking about my script in such grandiose nature because I really do believe that and that's what goes into it. Sounds like I think I'm talking about my Oscar script, but in my head, that's where I try to go every time. And as James will attest to, you know, we're building something here in this town that does not exist. Um, completely uncharted waters as far, and, and you know, we don't get to have this cinematographer, you know, because they don't live down the street, right? And it gets very expensive to bring people in. But, you know, I think we're getting pretty good at things around here and we're starting to really get noticed, which is ex so exciting because that means, you know, what James and I and everybody else are doing is working. That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. And it is working. And I tell you what, Find Them is a very gripping film. So you really told the story extremely well it was interesting seeing you know because uh, you always see nypd uh, car or, or whatever in the larger city but it was interesting seeing the youngstown police car actually yep. pull up in the film how did you make that happen uh i have to say thank you to the youngstown police department particularly captain simon uh he was kind enough to on his off duty come and join us and come for not only the perspective, uh, not just to have the cop car, because that was great, uh, but he and another officer from Poland uh, came and showed our actors how to properly, you know, choreograph their walk and their stance and how they would be going in as a team to infiltrate a, an arrest like, like this. Um, so they were kind enough to spend time with our actors and it made things, that scene is very... It's it's one of the best scenes in the film. So so yes, thank yes. you. Yeah, yes. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. very gripping. As I said before, and is is interesting again to see places in your own backyard, places where you grew up, being on the big screen. It's like, oh my god, that's that's absolutely fantastic. I must ask yeah. you about the process of uh, securing permits and and license oh. and all of that how how does that work for the independent uh, is that a large a uh, huge process or relatively simple um well it is relatively simple um and it's not why i was given the job whatsoever because it's not even a huge portion of what i service in my job um how i service the public but it's the same permitting as if you were going to put on you know a christmas parade uh, so you'll come to the city website, there's an application, and then my job is to help you walk through the process and gain the um, permission from the, the department heads of the city, chief of police, fire, public works, and the law department. Um, 
and then myself and special events, uh, you know, everyone has to sign off on it. And it's my job to get that completed and give it back to you so you can have your special event, which your special event could include you're shutting down an alleyway, you know, for the afternoon or the evening to film the day. Um, yeah, I just happen to have that knowledge of film. So it's it's fun when I get calls from producers, which has happened from outside of outside of Youngstown. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I'm so grateful, Melanie, that you chose to spend some time with us, helping us to understand what's happening in our own backyard. I want to bring James back because, as we said at the uh, outset, you two worked together. So, you know, maybe you can kind of tell on each other a little bit on how you met and what projects uh, that you worked on and, um, you know, what may be next in store for the two of you, either separately on projects or collaborating again. James, well, go for it. Oh, okay. okay. Go ahead. I'll go. Um, like I said earlier, we met on the set of The Housekeeper, which was Melody's uh, movie um, that also became a Tubi original. And um, and when we met on that set, um, it, we had a producer friend that was there. And uh, the trailer to What Happens in the Dark from the short film, uh, seen it and they was loving it. And they was like, hey, we got to turn this into a feature. So they hooked me and Melanie up. And Melanie was the, you know, uh, lead writer on What Happens in the Dark. So she wrote that feature for me. And so from there, you know, we just became, you know, friends and, and, and we just, you know, worked with each other. So I don't know, unless Melody got something different. <laughs> <laughs> no, and thank yeah, it was Cindy, Cindy, Cindy Castro de Russo that introduced us on The Housekeeper. Um, that movie was filmed in Youngstown as well. Uh, with Denise Richards and she came here and she just had a ball and she I didn't know what to expect but she came ready to work she played ball James you can remember I mean she was she was down she was with us the whole time it was amazing giving tips and uh, she'd love to come back anytime that's absolutely fantastic so tell me either of you what's absolutely next on your project list Don't all talk at once. <laughs> uh, I, I, I um, I have a few things in the works, but as of right now, my job is to figure out this new landscape after these strikes and the um, birth of AI to the public, um, and what that entails for us as producers, writers, um, how to use those things as tools. Uh, and right now my job is getting the housekeeper paid off so I can take that money and make something else. And I think in that gap of time, I'm going to figure out what a new production looks like in this, you know, 2025. That's excellent. James. Um, we got uh, some comedy uh, series that's coming up uh, live from the living room. Um, we shot some episodes. We have about four of those uh, done already. Um, so we'll, we'll be pushing that out here soon. Um, we also have uh, Cougar, which is another movie that we got coming up. Um, and uh, Faithful Intentions is another movie that we got in the process that we're going to be working on here in the next couple months. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm so grateful to know both of you. And we, as the Mahoning Valley, are proud to have the two of you wonderful filmmakers telling a greater story for the city of Youngstown, state of Ohio. Thank you so much. James Thank Ford, you. Jay Films, and Melanie Clark Vanella, Youngstown Pictures. Thank you both. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, that's going to do it for today's edition of Director's Chair. Thank you for joining us once again. Our filmmakers, James Ford of J Films and Melanie Clark Pinella of Youngstown Pictures, making movies in our valleys, telling stories for the whole world. If you like what you see, if you like what you saw, make sure that you support them and spread the word. Tell everybody you know, tell four people you don't. My name is Jerry B. I am your host for Director's Chair. We will see you next time. God bless.